What's up, peoples? Al York Sports, NFL post games. You already know, just that Monday madness. You know, I'm going to come at y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all. I'm going to do whatever it takes, man, to get the job done, man. Before I start the show, I just noticed something. I've been to about like 10 in and outs. And I ain't never seen a thug motherfucker work there. Like, and they don't even have to be a thug. Like, just like a mean looking cat. Never. So it's like they prejudiced to hiring people that got like a face. Because all those kids in there working look like they from Yale, Brown, Colgate, the university of the university. It's that shit Eddie Murphy said. But what I'm just trying to say, it's crazy because you go to McDonald's, that's all you see. Burger King, that's all you see. Little hood rat cats. Never seen one in a, in and out. So they hiring must be really exclusive. I mean, they, they make sure you ain't got an ounce of anger in you when they hire you over there. Let me start my show. First game from yesterday. Oh, this was a heartbreaker. The five and six Tampa Bay Bucks went up to Cleveland to play the four and seven Browns. The line was minus three bucks. I told y'all when I gave the play out, not to justify, this, this game smells. But there's no way in the world I could have went against Uncle Tom against Brissette. There's no way in the world. So I'm going to eat this loss. I'm going to take this loss like a man. And if you watch the game, uh, the, the, the score at halftime, you know what I mean? It was tie at the half, if I'm correct. I didn't mark it down. Yeah, it was tie at the half. I think it was like something like 10 up, 13, 13. But second half, Bucks went up seven. They was controlling the game for the majority of the second half. They had this game, dog. Like, it's just incredible how, you know, it was like a fourth and 10 with 38 seconds from like the 11-yard line, and the Bucks couldn't get a stop. Not only did they couldn't make a stop, Nadoku made a one-handed OBJ kind of catch to take that game basically into overtime. And then in overtime, we had two opportunities, me, we saying the Bucks, because I had the Bucks. Did absolutely nothing. One time they got like a couple first downs, got a flag. Cleveland got the ball, and I, I already knew what it was. Brissett went deep to Cooper. Cooper went on a, a, a cut route, ran up, took it to the two-yard line. Cleveland won the game 23-17 in overtime. No excuses. Congratulations to the Cleveland Browns. It's just fucked up that I got to lose these kind of games, man. I guess the smarter you are the more bad luck you get. That's how I look at it. Game number two. Great call here by Sportsbook Jeff. 7-4 and four Cincinnati Bengals versus the 7-4 and four Tennessee Titans. The line was Cincy minus one. Funny line. Why is a funny line? Last year in the playoffs, Tennessee was favorite. This year, there's no Jamar Chase, one of the best receivers in the game. Joe Mixon, one of the best do-backs in the game. How the hell is Cincinnati minus one? So Jeff caught on to that because me personally, I thought, you know, Tennessee was the right side. He noticed that's what I'm talking about, that phony baloney shit. That was just like the Buck game, why the Buck was only three. But at least they was favorite. They made Cincinnati favorite. Jeff ran with the Bengals. You know, Bengals got Perrine as a backup. They got Higgins, boy. So they got other guys who could step up anyway. And the game was tied at half at 10. Second half. The Bengals end up winning the second half 10 to 6 and end up winning the game 20 to 16 on a foolish penalty by the defensive lineman after Tennessee got a, a, a stop at the uh, 10 yard line. They kicked the field goal. This fool went and hit the offensive lineman in the head. They, 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 they took off the points off the ball. And, and uh, Cincinnati decided to kneel it for the last two minutes. Tennessee had no more timeouts. What kind of fool you have to be? You let them kick the field goal. You let them go up seven. Now you got two minutes to try to tie the game. That that defensive lineman took away Mark Vrabel and, and the Tennessee Titans' chances. 
of tying that ball game. I was sitting him down the next day. You can't make mistakes like that. It ain't no sorry to cover a stupid mistake like that. But not to take away from a well-played game, Cincinnati stopped Derrick Henry once again. As a matter of fact, let me shoot this real quick. I'm going to shoot back to game one. Uh, Tom Brady, 29 for 43, 263, two touchdowns. Brissett, 23 for 37, 210, one touchdown, one pick. All white for the uh, for the Bucks, 14 rushes, 64 yards. Godwin, 12 receptions, 110 yards, one touchdown. And Nick Chubb, 26 for 116, one touchdown. Cooper, 7 for 94, dropped a huge open third, fourth down and nine that didn't come back to haunt them as Cleveland Browns prevailed. Now, let me give you the numbers for the second game. Let me see where I put these numbers. I might have mixed something up over here. I'm already fucking up. But you know what? We're going to skip that game because I forgot to put the numbers for the Cincinnati Bengals. But anyways, bottom line, matter of fact, here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Joe Burrow, 22 for 37, 270, one touchdown. Perrine, 17 rushes, 58 yards, one touchdown. Higgins, seven receptions, 114, one touchdown. For the Tennessee Titans, Tannehill, 22 for 34. 291, Derrick Henry, 17 for 38 yards. Cincinnati Bengals hold him down. Now, he did break through on a reception on a screen pass. He had three receptions for 79 yards. One, he almost took it to the building. He got ripped peanut, peanut Tillman status by some rookie. I forgot his name, but Tennessee was able to fall on the ball in the end zone, get the touchdown, so it didn't hurt Derrick Henry to fumble that. Uh, in the early in the game, in a great game played in Tennessee, as the Cincinnati Bengals defeated the Tennessee Titans 20 to 16. That was a real good game. Game three, seven and four, Baltimore Ravens versus four and seven, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Jeff liked the Jaguars again. I, I didn't. I didn't understand this one. I hate going against Lamar Jackson. I'm gonna keep it 100. Matter of fact, I'm gonna keep it 1,000. The line was three and a half for the Ravens. Uh, Ravens were up early. Um, it was up 10 to 9. Then they went up 19. Something like 19 to 10. Let me correct myself. They had a 19-10 lead late in the fourth quarter or early in the fourth quarter. And got out score 18 to 8. And that's been a problem for the Ravens holding on the leads. I don't know if you blame Harbaugh, the defense, or Lamar, but somebody's got to get the blame for that. In a real good game. I mean, the Jaguars came back late. Sunshine stepped up. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't like this game, dog. I really didn't like this game. But Sunshine definitely stepped up, did his thing. And let me give you some numbers for that game right there. Lamar Jackson, 16 for 32, 254, one touchdown. Also rushed for 14 rushes. 89 yards. Jay Oliver, four receptions, 75 yards, one touchdown for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Sunshine, 29 for 37, 321, three touchdowns, no picks. Great game by Trevor Lawrence, a.k.a. Sunshine. Hasty, 12 rushes for 28 yards. Zay Jones, real big game for Zay Jones. Huge catches for Zay Jones, 11 for 145, and a real good game. Let me punch out real quick. I got to do all this shit in one time. Let me hold up. Give me a minute. Okay. Got to make sure I do that. I don't want to be getting in trouble now that I work. Okay. Game number four real quick. Four and seven. Las Vegas Raiders versus the six and five Seattle Seahawks. The line was Seahawks three and a half. Jeff called it. Yo, Jeff was hot yesterday. Uh, minus three and a half for the Seahawks. I personally thought the Seahawks will win. But I like the three and a half. I, I thought they'll win by three. That's what I thought. But the Raiders won outright. Uh, I mean, a real great game for the Raiders, winning 40 to 36. Um, they were down right off the rip, caught through a pick. Seattle took it in and looked like blowout city. Raiders got their composure, stayed within the game. Josh Jacobs blew them up. Josh Jacobs had a total of 300 yards with that 86 yard scamp at the end of the game in overtime to beat the Seattle Seahawks 40 to 36 in a thriller. I call this a thriller because. This was a great game, and I told y'all two weeks ago when, when Carr started crying on the podium that they luck was going to flip-flop because they can't be getting the bad end of the stick all the time. They can't. 
It's just, it, it's impossible. It's called a law of averages. They lost like eight games by seven or less points, and they keep fucking up. And now they're starting to win these games, or at least the last two games, which they beat the Broncos and not the Seahawks in overtime, beat both of them, and got the bounces on both games to go their way. Let me give you some numbers. Derek Carr, 25 for 36, 295, three touchdowns, two picks. Josh Jacobs, 33 rushes, 229 yards, two, two touchdowns, including the game winner, and six receptions for 74 yards, a total of 300 yards for Josh Jacobs, who wasn't even supposed to play yesterday. Salute to Josh Jacobs. Man, he got the game ball, by the way. And uh, Geno Smith for the Seahawks, 27 for 37, 328, two touchdowns, one pick. Geno still putting up ridiculous numbers. K. Walker, the third, 14 for 26, two touchdowns. Got two touchdowns, but had a horrible rushing average, and they stopped them. They definitely stopped them. Metcalf, 11 receptions, 90 yards. Great win for the Las Vegas Raiders. And last but not least, game number five. Game number five, we're going to go to the 4-8 and eight Green Bay Packers versus the 10-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles. Now, my son, my peoples, myself, we all think that the Eagles are a fluke, right? They like the best 10 and they like the worst 10-1 team i ever seen. No disrespect to the Eagles who are a good team. No, they're a good team, but I don't think they're 10-1 and one good. You understand what I'm saying? That's like, that's like Michael Irvin was a great receiver. I love Michael Irvin, but he ain't top five. I can name you maybe 10 guys that are better than a playmaker. And I love the playmaker. I love the playmaker. But I could at least name you five guys, maybe 10. So the more of the story is the Eagles are not as good as they record. So this was a crazy game. I mean, from the beginning, 27-20 at half, a bunch of touchdowns. Um... I'm going to tell you a story, too, after that I had a bet. This shit was crazy. And the second half, I mean, woo, what a game. I mean, uh, Hurts did his thing. Aaron Rodgers did his thing. Aaron Rodgers was taken out. I think his thumb got hurt and his oblique. They bring in Love, and Love ran that offense as good as um, Rodgers. It almost looked like Love was going to bring him back. Uh, he hit Watson over the middle for like a 60-yard scamper. Touchdown with like about eight minutes left, seven minutes. They were only down seven. It looked like they was going to turn that table, and I was hoping not because I had the Eagles on the money line. But this is the story I got to tell you before I give you all the statistics. I had Jalen Hurts on a prop bet to throw for over one and a half touchdowns. This is a true story. If you watch the game, three different occasions they had the ball within the 10-yard line. They ran it in all the fucking time. Yo, I was punching the fucking table. I was fucking vexed. Like, these motherfuckers don't throw the ball? They, like, ran, like, 21 out of 22 first place. No lying. But then I realized that they was only running because Green Bay never put that extra man up. Once they put that extra man up is when Hurst started throwing the ball. And once they did that, I was able to get my over one and a half because he threw one right before the half. That was lucky as fuck, the Watkins. And then he threw one in the third quarter early because I needed that early because I wasn't going to get it late. I already knew that. So I, that was a blessing in disguise. Great game by the Eagles. Great game by the Packers. Packers are definitely out the playoff. Eagles are showing they belong. Let me give you all some numbers. Aaron Rodgers, 11 for 16, 140 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Love, 6 for 9, 113, one touchdown. Dylan, 8 for 64, one touchdown. Watson, four receptions for 110 yards, one touchdown. And for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts, 16 for 28, 153, two touchdown, no pick. I needed that. Uh, Hurts also rushing, 17 for 157. I think this was the highest rushing yard for a quarterback in a long, long time. It might be the greatest effort ever. I got to check it out. But I definitely know it's been for a long time. And D. Smith, four reception, 50 yards. As the Philadelphia Eagles defeated the Green Bay Packers 40-33 to in Philadelphia. What a game. All these games were great. Let me give you a quick summary. Uh, basically, like I said, Tampa choked. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals handled their business. Vegas came back. The uh, big Vegas uh, Raiders are going to start getting the ball to bounce their way. Uh, also, the Green Bay game was a real good game. They fought early. They hung early. Uh, Philly put two touchdowns right up.
Green Bay came back with two. Philly, another two. Green Bay came right back. But Eagles were too much for them, too deep for them. Aaron got hurt. End of story. NFL postgame show, Al York Sports. Salute to everybody. Also, salute to D. Beeman, Price Tag Entertainment, my wifey, and everybody that tunes in, man. Hold your heads.